Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll learn about the servers and database. So before we get started, we must get to know about the concept of what a network actually is and how it functions. So a server is nothing but collection of computers or a network of computers which is being maintained by a client server architecture. So if there is a request from a client, the server responds to that or it gives a reply or a, re a response action towards the client queries. That's how a server functions. So, so the server is nothing but a, um, a computer which acts as a main uh, source which provides or gives information to all your requests and all your data retrieval or your data collection or your uh, security or your files or everything is going to be saved or transferred through them. So the web server or the server could be of various categories. It could be a web server where it stores up your websites or it could be an email server where it can host up your email accounts or it could be used for your data transfer or your file transfers. So that's your file transfer uh, server. So depending on the usage, we've got like various architectures of servers being deployed. So the server's jobs, if you happen to know the, notice about the jobs of the server, it includes about uh, data distribution, about the resource management, or about uh, customers uh, query handling or about uh, uh, serving to the request of the clients. So there could be like various uh, features or uh, services which have been performed by a server. So this computer, whatever you have it, when it is connected to a network, it becomes a server where it's been accessible all over through the internet, through a public IP. So once your desktop computer, when it has been assigned with a public IP, that becomes a server. It takes up a role of a server where it can handle queries or when it can be pinged from an external source or from an external location. So these servers, when it is acts as a client server uh, architecture role, it helps you to transfer files between different locations or between a different computers. Say for example, you have file X stored on your server and the user is trying to access that server. A FTP session has been activated between the user as well as the server and the file gets transferred to the local computer of the person who is trying to access it. And the same way is about the data. Say for example, you are looking out for a data. Say for example, you are uh, trying to log into your banking account. So you're trying to give it with your credentials and uh, it verifies your authenticity. And once it is verified, it gives you the login access to the account. So a data, a data verification happens there at that end of a location. So the server's role is varied and it depends upon the feature or with the facility which it's been deployed with. You. Then coming back to the uh, operating system or about the architecture of servers. Servers, as I said, is nothing but a collection of uh, a bigger component. Say, for example, you have a computer at home which could be running with your uh, code series of Intel. A server is something which is going to be like uh, taking up multiple requests from users at the same time. So it can't handle up with uh, a simple uh, code processor, whatever you have it. So it needs to happen or it needs to have some kind of a higher architecture server. Hence the reason why we've got like Xenon servers which are there in the market. So these Xenon servers are like very powerful when it comes to your uh, other uh, servers and they help you in data transfer at higher bit speeds and they have a higher architecture on them. So these servers are built with a crucial uh, thing in mind where it needs to stand with the uh, innumerable number of uh, customer queries. So the, we, uh, we try to build them with high power uh, hardware which could be a highly efficient RAM or it could be your highly efficient hard drive or anything of that matter. Even your internet port happens to be in a higher specification. We normally use a gigabyte internet port at home, but on the servers, we try to go with a 100 GBBS network WAN port so that your internet speeds are really powerful and fast to serve all the user queries. So as a computer, when it built with high-end configuration of hardware, it becomes a server and it becomes really powerful to serve all the user's request. Right. 
then comes the data security as the server is going to be like pinged in from various resources we need to have more reliability to the server and it needs to perform all the access or the actions of whatever queries have been thrown into it so at instances like that the server should not like fail or it should not show any kind of downtimes so to overcome that we try to go with the concept of uh, raid so these raids are nothing but your uh, data transfer uh, system which are in uh, uh, place so these uh, raid systems normally take care of your uh, systems or your computer's uh, file access or your uh, safety of it so these raids are nothing but redundant array of uh, in, like uh, independent drives say for example i'm having a hard drive uh, one on my computer and i'm trying to replicate the same right with the another hard drive as well so that if the hardware a fails the hardware b will take care of the role and all my data will be still be transferred so as we can't experience a downtime on the server we always try to go with the concept of raid so this raid is a bigger concept by itself so if you are interested leave your comment below i'll try to make a video on this raid concept completely so the, this raid goes normally from raid 0 to raid 6 there are different levels of raid so raid 0 is a normal standalone system where we just have a single hard drive raid raid 1 goes to the system where we have a one on one copy whatever happens on the server uh, on the drive 0 will be going will be like copied into the raid 1 as well then raid 2 will be something like a bit level security where each bit is been replicated or everything is been duplicated on that stand so from raid 0 to raid uh, 0 to 06 raid 0 to raid 6 we have got like different various varieties of uh, raid and even this raid 0 will be like having different architecture of os as well so raid 0 can have a uh, os of uh, windows or linux or mac so depending on the usage we can try to deploy this uh, server with the os of our choice the preferable os of uh, choice would be always a linux platform that's because of its uh, sturdity and it is also very reliable on uh, higher bandwidths like even if you are trying to run a windows server if it is requiring a restart or a reboot every 24 to 48 hours a linux server can be up for almost like 48 days uh, without any restart or without any downtimes so that reliable linux servers are and they are like very uh, efficient in terms of uh, hardware usage as well when it comes to windows server they try to consume a lot of uh, ram as well as the other architectures however uh, linux servers are very inexpensive when it comes to hardware so we always try to prefer uh, uh, linux servers when it comes to an environment where it's going to be a web server which is going to be deployed or an email server or a ftp server in that place so all of these comes into place when a web server of choice is needed and um, as i'm talking repeatedly about data the data is a very important role here because uh, data are nothing but a collection of uh, related informations or irrelated informations could be anything so all these uh, collection of informations we call as uh, data So these are like raw contents which needs to be processed together or have to be put together into a consolidated form or in a unified form. So that's the place where we come into the concept of database. So a database is nothing but a collection of related data or unrelated data. So a database is again um, into um, multiple categories. So as I said, it's a container which contains all the information which could be related or irrelated, and it can be accessed from anywhere. so we have servers which are exclusively performing only as the database servers as well as we saw earlier we have a web server email server ftp server we've got database servers as well for bigger corporations and companies or banking sectors they normally try to have a separate database the web server will be a separate server so each of these servers will be separate this front end of uh, whatever you see will be the uh, web server and the database will be in a separate secured server where there is no data loss or no data breach happening and all these data information so you are trying to log into say for example we take the bank account you are trying to log into your account you have your first name your personal information your phone numbers your address and everything so all these informations are going to be stored into a separate database as a uh, table would be called as a user profile so all your personal information will be stored under the user profile 
then we will have another table which will be having all your transactions then we'll have another table where we'll have like other information related to us so all these informations of multiple data are put into a complete uh, structure which is nothing but your database so these databases could be of various categories so these unprocessed information has to be like coming through a various uh, section say for example i myself have used up in the past like 20 years before i used to use up a flat file system where all my informations and things are like for example the first name last name date of birth emails whatever information i used to store them as a notepad file we store all the information as a text file so we call them as a flat file format where all these informations are not going to be in the different categories we call bb.txt which will be my database file and that will be the file which i would include which will have all the informations which are like uh, separated with the help of uh, tabs or commas or some kind of a separator and i'll try to import these information so we could use a um, a flat file as a text document then came the concept of using excel sheets as a flat files then with advancement of technology we started using uh, Microsoft MS Access as the database. Then, as days moved on, we tried started using powerful databases like MySQL and MSQL came into place. So these could handle millions of records at ease, and they are really powerful in indexing them as well. So over a period of time, a span of 50 years almost, these flat file systems are now replaced with highly advanced database structures which are available in the market. So to maintain all of these databases, we have something called as a database management system. That's a system which controls or maintains this database. So this database system will be having a resources to multiple number of user accounts and all of their personal information are going to be secured and stored into a database system. So this database management system is nothing but collecting or enormous amount of user related data and anything related to them. Say for example, we take an account of Facebook or WhatsApp or Instagram. So it is going to have multiple database, which is going to store uh, uh, users' uh, profile as one category. Users' photographs will be stored into another system. The videos, the timeline posts, everything will be stored under different uh, databases. And all of these are interlinked or managed with the help of a DBMS, which is nothing but your database management system. So these database management system could be again of various categories. The first thing would be your hierarchical database, where everything is going to be uh, related with a parent-child connection. Say for example, you have a user account and your user profile, whatever information is going to be there, they're all going to come under the hierarchical system. Then we've got like network uh, DBMS, which is nothing but your uh, um, WhatsApp or Instagram, I would say, because that's going to have a network system where uh, your account is going to be uh, one of the uh, database uh, user Y's account will be another one, user Z's account will be another one. So multiple uh, user accounts are going to be taken care of with the help of a network DBMS. Then we'll have like relational DBMS, relational DBMS I would say in the help of a banking sector I would say, which could be um, um, say for example all the users who hold a personal account, they all will be categorized into one account where they'll have different structures as uh, personal info, their uh, credit card info, their personal info, all of these will be as uh, one savings account. Then we have a checking account holders. Then we have got like a, um, a last account holder. So different kind of account holders will all be uh, categorized under relational DBMS. So they're all, prefer, uh, all coming under the uh, banking accounts, but under different categories. So of uh, purchases or businesses which the bank is trying to sell us, that all would come under the relational DBMS. Then with the latest enhancements to make things easier, to index things faster, we came up with the concept of object-oriented DBMS. That's the most recent technology which has been used these days. So these helps you to form everything with the primary key, whatever we have as a, uh, like when a user tries to log into the system, we try to uh, index them or we try to point them with uh, different information where uh, we try to link them with the help of object orientation. So that makes your data retrieval or data storage really efficient and to search and uh, display the output, 
that also becomes really faster and efficient. So these are the various types of database systems or structures which are available. So I hope you guys would have got some idea about what a server and database about is and if you got more queries or any doubts on this do leave your comment and uh, if you have if you want like more information or uh, information or details about this then try to uh, uh, leave your comments and I'll try to answer them in the next video. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you.